I don't care what anyone says. I believe that there are devilish children in this world. Like there are really devilish children in this world. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your opinions are. I feel like there are some people that were born to be evil. Okay, before I didn't believe, you know, that whole thing of people saying no one was born like that. They were taught, please save it. I 100% believe that some people were born to be evil. So Graham Young didn't have the normal childhood. After he was born, his mother passed away like a few months after. So his dad sent him to his aunt and uncle's house to live with them. But like not too long after, his dad remarried. So his dad brought him back to live with him and his stepmom. His sister was also sent away to another family because obviously the aunt and uncle couldn't take care of two kids, but they said they could take care of one. So they brought the sister back and they were just living as one big family. Graham was born on September 7th of 1947 and he was actually very attached to his aunt and uncle. And when he was sent back to his dad's home to live with him, it was seen that he was, he changed from the last time that his dad like saw him, you know, and he was born in England to his mom called Margaret Young and she died of tuberculosis. So back to how weird his dad noticed and some, his sister too noticed that he was acting like he started obsessing over like TV shows. And that's normal for children at that age, obviously to be obsessing over TV shows, but this type of TV shows that this boy was obsessing over was like, dr crippen which is like a famous modra or he was obsessed over 60 famous trials which is like a book of criminals like his favorite was william peters who was a doctor that poisoned his wife so why are you as a child obsessing over shows like that i mean i would get a little bit freaked out not going to lie at the age of 12 he developed a love for adolf hitler i mean you know for halloween or for event he would try to dress up as adolf hitler and say some words that adolf hitler would say also so it was just a very weird face that i don't know why i mean if i had a child or if not even just my child if i see any child that's doing that i mean i'm going to like be fucking scared of you i'm going to like you know like so i don't know how people or maybe they just thought because he was a child but like i said there are some devilish children i said this once before so i'm not taking any chances just because you're a child I feel like you can do no harm. Watch it. So when Graham started school, he was kind of cast aside by his mates and peers because the school children thought he was weird. Even the teachers were disturbed because he would wear like old brooches and you know stuff that like the opposite people that would attack their country would wear because I mean World War II was still fresh in everyone's brain at that time. I mean, you know, this was like 1940s downwards. He didn't really care about any of that or if people were looking at him weird or if children thought he was weird his best subject in school was chemistry and subject toxicology which is the study of poisons and the school didn't really dive deep into the subject so instead of like forgetting about it like every other student would have he would go to the library take up books in the library and study more on toxicology <laughs> red flag so the few children who got to get close to him a little bit or try to play with him said that he was very weird because he would try to get them to sniff stuff especially in the forensic lab in school like harmful substances and you know and he would try to indulge them in a cult and i mean he was said to have been in a cult with a librarian that he knows from around his street that brought him into a cult and then he would even kill the cat one time according to one of the students that were in his school that he would use it as a form of sacrifice for his um cult and i mean he would poison the cat so he was really really getting used to you know knowing what poisons to use or what chemicals to mix because he was really interested in study of poisons and forensic science so several cats around the area of his school um, after school hours and around his hometown, especially his neighbors, cats were missing. Like they would just see cats like laying up dead around the bushes or whatnot. But nobody ever really thought that, you know, it could have been him because they were just thinking, okay, maybe the weather around this time is just bad for cats. 
or maybe they are eating something or someone is you know they just didn't think of anything like this like i mean who would so graham told his friends that he wished his um stepmom was dead nobody really knows why if he got into a fight with his grandmom or sorry stepmom at the time and it's just very weird because he took it so far to the extent that he would make a voodoo doll and you know use pins to be pinching it saying that he wants to kill his stepmom you know and there was one time that he brought a mouse to the house and she confiscated it because she was wondering why something like this would happen and i mean you know it's just very very sad honestly to think about something like this he even drew a tombstone and wrote in hateful memory of molly young which is basically anticipating that she is going to die or that she's dead you know seeking solace in the fact that you know she's dead so moving on in school he befriended another boy called christopher williams and christopher williams was just like him i mean you know he loved science so he grew fond of christopher christopher also grew fond of him they would go to lunch together watch movies together you know just boy you know like friends and you know just being happy that you know you have another friend but along the line christopher started getting sick started having headache throwing up and you know i mean his family thought that he was just faking it so that he would get out of school so they took him to the doctor to just make sure and it was said that he just had a migraine being poisoned never came to their minds i mean and obviously graham had tested one of his toxicology or forensic science um studies that he had been researching and it's just absurd to even think about but i think he didn't ever also think that graham could do something like that to him so his study of poisons actually made him be so insane that when he got into a fight with christopher he decided to go to two chemists and i don't know how he did it he convinced them that he was 17 and he needed some chemicals for a school project and he took thallium and he also took arsenic digitals that were basically enough to kill 300 people and he took these and put them inside william's drink and food and apparently graham was interested in a girl that william was also interested in and for some reason william and the girl were going to watch a movie and they got into a fight and um graham said i'm going to kill you for this but i mean you know it's just something that people usually say when they are fighting i'm going to kill you for this i mean you should probably stop saying that if you actually do say that so just in case of anything you don't get fucking blamed because now i really would never have thought i mean and he couldn't go for the party or for the movie rather obviously and he took william's space because william obviously was sick and he couldn't show up for the movie anymore so basically he poisoned his friend just because he was going to go watch a movie with a girl that he likes after that obviously christopher was not going to be his friend again after the whole thing obviously like you know he would find out that they eventually went to see the movie together and you know what not like you know teenage or i don't even know if it's to call this teenage or little boy happenings <laughs> i really don't know but like he now made friends with a new boy called clyde clyde was very scared of graham because he wasn't interested in science and all that like as much as christopher his old friend was but he got really scared because graham would show him drawings of a guy dangling from a tree or something with poison underneath him or him drinking or other drawings of someone drinking poisons and dying you know like all those kind of weird shit so it was very scary for clyde and you know he just basically kind of backed off a little and he also told clyde that's graham that he wanted to test something out like poisoning the people in his school but like he said that he was not going to be able to observe them i mean you know when he poisons someone he wants to see what the poison is going to do to them so he can know how to you know how they are going to react you know he can put in observations and everything but because he's not going to obviously follow them home he's not going to be around them 24 7 so he just didn't do it anyway so he was going to a closer subject which is his family
Along the line, Graham got obsessed with mixing, collecting, and testing out poisons. And his father actually thought that he just grew an interest in, you know, all of this um, science stuff. And even got him a chemistry set. And not knowing that he was just prepping young Graham to basically almost or possibly kill him himself and i mean who does this story even sound familiar to basically it's just giving me like background check of jeffrey Dahmer, kind of you know like i mean it started from like a very young age i mean you know when you see that your child is interested in poisons i mean yeah like it's chemistry but watch it so graham got better with mixing and you know putting out the right poisons to possibly kill someone so he served his family which is his stepmom his dad and his sister to the extent that his sister even fainted or collapsed on the way to work he did not also stop there he also served it to his friends at school so he was just basically watching everyone's health deteriorate at the time and nobody suspected this boy even though he was the only one that was not sick eventually graham's obsession with adolf hitler increased he was in love with the nazi germ and he just basically hated his stepmom a little bit more so the poison that he gave everybody like i mean he stopped but he continued for his stepmom he kept on giving her thallium and thallium causes death very slowly so she was dying of excruciating pain she was just basically not even it at the point of time and she eventually died in the hospital of natural causes so her body was cremated and it was just said or seen that she died of natural causes and no autopsy was given i would actually suggest that no matter how someone dies i feel like an autopsy should still be given so at least they could like try to you know anything could happen any freaking thing could happen because i mean i would never have thought also that someone as young as graham could have done something like this but then you remember that i said that graham was sent to his aunt and uncle when his actual birth mom died so that aunt that he was sent to kind of you know was checking in on graham and remember that you know he was also obsessed with poison i mean not obsessed but he had an interest in poison and it made no sense how that woman that was really healthy from nowhere had no other medical condition just died so she had suspected graham actually she was the only one that thought about this i don't even know how his father did not think about this but i mean you know your love for your son you would never think something like that so yeah that's fine don't even blame him at all but she then called the police after he had she had sent graham to a psych ward on may 23rd of 1962 graham young finally confessed to the police that he had poison his whole family and he was also basically the cause of his stepmom's death he was detained under medical health act in bradmore hospital and he was actually diagnosed by two psychiatrists as having schizophrenia and bpd after nine years in prison graham young was released and actually it was found out that in prison he was also studying poison still so he went even in depth to the fact that he um would extract poisons from leaves he would know the leaves that were you know in the farmland or where they were supposed to work in prison and extract them and put it into some of his inmates food and one of the victims was called john berridge which basically died of that poison that graham gave him but this was found out way after he had already lived like his life outside of prison after coming out you know like i mean it's this is just like a by the way um saying after his release he worked as a quartermaster in john hardland and he was working as a in the laboratory like science laboratory and it's just very funny to me because how is someone that was released from prison for poisoning people work in a science laboratory but i mean i would just guess that the people that were there did not know that he was released from prison for that particular cause he probably just thought that he murdered someone or probably didn't even know anything at all because i mean this boy basically you know him and chemicals are a no-no you know he should not be anywhere near chemicals but i would assume and everyone should assume that they did not know so he was looking for a substance called hallium and there was no hallium in sight in the laboratory he was 
working for so he just got it from another chemist in london and then it happened that everybody in the workplace in that laboratory started falling ill especially his boss and other colleagues the last colleague that you know he poisoned is called fred briggs and that was when there was like a very huge hassle in the workplace because everybody was falling sick and they thought that it was a virus but obviously it wasn't after investigation but the whole workplace um graham was arrested in november 21st of 1971 and they discovered thallium antimony and anticonine in the bodies of his poor poor victims and gladly they didn't die but he was also taken to jail and he pleaded not guilty but he was eventually sentenced to life in prison and that was where he met ian brady which is one of the more murderers so he knew about ian brady like how popular ian brady was and how murderous he was so he was scared that he was going to get a taste of his own medicine in prison but he eventually became friends with ian along the line so he wasn't really that scared of ian anymore i mean they became like buddies i mean you know birds of the same feathers flock together so of course you guys are both like murderers so of course you guys would get along i mean you know they would play chess together um ian even wrote a book called the gates of janus where he would talk about different murderers and serial killers and one of them was actually graham young and he would talk about how graham was so in love with adolf hitler to the extent that he would um grow a stash you know like a mustache just like adolf hitler so i mean they were basically best of buddies brady also became very fond of graham and you know they would play chess together and brady would always beat him in the game and graham only listened to two songs in prison which were jeff wayne's war of the worlds and hit the jack by ray charles so i mean in prison also when people go into prison i mean uh there's a way that your crimes are known by everybody around like gossip also goes on in prison for some very weird reason i don't know how but um so i think brady found out about what graham had done obviously like they all knew their crimes but um brady said that he would sleep and have dreams about the fact that graham would poison him and that he was very scared of graham now so apparently it was not the other way around you know i mean graham was supposed to be scared of brady was as scared of brady at first and now the rules just flipped so he thought that one day graham was going to poison him so on august 1st of 1990 graham died of a heart attack in prison and it's so freaking like crazy and funny because heart attack is like one of the symptoms or one of the things that someone that is poisoned could face so he felt the agony that his victims felt before they died and this was basically a very very happy ending for me i don't know if it is for you because sometimes i just feel so bad when someone murders someone especially purposely goes to prison and gets to come out and it's just i mean i i just don't like that thought so he felt the agony that his victims faced and that is the end of this video so thank you guys for watching to the end don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in my next video